Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Mike Swanson, editor of WallStreetWindow.com. Welcome back to the show, Mike, and happy July 4th. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's been a fascinating first half of the year. And as we enter July, we're going into the second half. What kind of lessons have we learned and how could they help us in the future? Well, um, you know, we've seen all sorts of news events. Uh, <laughs> it seems like every week something crazy is happening and things are changing faster than in most of our lifetimes. I mean, we've had this virus situation the economy uh, not only sh- shut down, but rapidly shrank. The stock market uh, crashed in March. The S&P 500 fell over 30%. And then we've had a big rally. Uh, but one thing I think people should really realize, because it's hard to, and that is the U.S. economy, and the economies all over the world for that matter, has are going through a historic contraction in a very short amount of time. The Federal Reserve is estimating that U.S. GDP is going to shrink over 30% in the first half of this year. And that's a calamity, and it's a shocking number. But I don't think we're able in our own lives to really see it because most people, if they, you know, they're not feeling that sort of pain that would match a 30% decline in the real economy. People who are unemployed, they got a stimulus check and then the unemployment benefits that they would normally get. And that's kind of helped them. Uh, businesses are getting uh, bailouts and stimuluses to keep them alive, so to speak. Uh, but we're all kind of more isolated than we normally would be from each other because of the virus. And we're spending more time watching television, looking at the Internet, which clouds what we're seeing because the Internet algorithms are created to deliver us the information that will generate the most attention from us, the most clicks uh, and so forth, and not necessarily give us the best information. Uh, it's really designed to provoke us emotionally. So I think we're all kind of living in a fog and not really cognizant that the economy has really been massively disrupted. And we may not really realize how bad that situation is uh, for several more months. Uh, so it's a so I think that's the big takeaway from the year so far. Now, the financial markets, I don't really think there's necessarily anything incredibly unusual or different uh, now than that's happened before when it comes to the stock market or gold or other things because the charts uh, and the trends uh, you know, make sense at this point in time, meaning that if we just look at the U.S. stock market, it crashed, uh, and then it's had a rally. Well, when any market moves down that quickly and bounces back up that quickly, typically what you would expect is for it to then do nothing for at least several weeks, if not several months, just drift before it establishes a move that can last more than simply uh, a day or two. Uh, you know, so we're in some sort of range bound market for the time being, probably will end, 
uh, let's say, in August or after Labor Day. So I don't really think much is going to happen in July, and it doesn't really matter what the news is. If the news is more viruses, cases are happening, more hospitalizations, uh, more signs that the economic uh, bounce that we've had for the past eight weeks is petering out, I don't think the stock market will care. Um, and if somehow there's good news, uh, I don't think it'll care much either. So I think that's where we basically are in some sort of limbo when it comes to the stock market for this moment. We'll have more with Mike Swanson right after this. Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlin, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. Cypress Development Corp. is developing a world-class lithium resource in the heart of Clayton Valley, Nevada. The size of the resource makes the Clayton Valley project a premier asset with the potential to impact the future of lithium supply. Cypress Development Corp. trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol CYP, the OTCQB, symbol CYDVF, and on Frankfurt, symbol C1Z1. For more information, please visit our website, cypressdevelopmentcorp.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Mike Swanson. Mike, what do you expect to happen with oil? Well, I, I think oil is sort of stuck with the stock market, so to speak, in that both are really tied to the economy. And oil crashed uh, in April. I mean, it was absolutely incredible. The price of oil in the futures market <laughs> it went negative <laughs> for a very short period of time. Very bizarre uh, but it happened, and then we bounced back up tremendously. So it's now trading just under $40 a barrel. Again, when you see such extreme volatility in a short amount of time, a swing massively down followed by a bounce back up, typically what you can expect is for volatility to shrink in that market to drift. And I, I think that's where we are with oil. I don't expect oil to really have much more meaningful upside from here, and it's likely to just simply float around this level going into the fall, and then maybe we'll go back down to below $30 or something. Uh, but for now, I think we're stuck around 40 and I'm not looking for much to happen with the price of oil. We'll have more with Mike Swanson right after this. Media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, Recycling Trade Publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Mike Swanson. What's going on with gold? Well, I think gold is actually the biggest bright spot in all the financial markets. Uh, I know everyone is mesmerized by the rally that has, has happened in the stock market. <clears throat> and some individual stocks have really outperformed. Apple, uh, for instance, is been going straight up. Uh, Apple fell to below 1700 in March. And now it's right below 3000. I mean, I'm sorry, Amazon. I mean, not Apple, but, uh, Apple <laughs> itself also has done well, um, trading at 370 at a new high. There's uh, several bright spots like that, but as far as an entire asset class, it's really gold that is the best one. Uh, gold has been outperforming the stock market now since October 2018, and when the stock market crashed in March, uh, gold didn't fall but about 15%, half as much as the stock market dropped. And then gold immediately exploded and made a new 52-week high 
uh, in early April uh, and made another 52-week high just the other day, and it's trading right under $1,800 an ounce, and the all-time high for gold uh, isn't even $100 higher from where it is now. So in my view, gold is probably the most bullish thing in all markets uh, to be buying and investing in. And I, so I think it's a great thing to buy just to make money uh, going forward here. But there's another reason people need to get into it, and that is that bonds now yield practically nothing. So they can't act as a safe haven portion of your portfolio when you get absolutely no return from them. And so slowly people are moving some of the money that they would devote to bonds as a safe haven into gold. Um, and I think that's probably the main driver of what's helping gold now outperform. But it's a situation that's only going to continue going forward. So I'm expecting more and more people to think like that when it comes to bonds, move money into gold, and help drive the gold price up. All that said, though, there's almost zero interest among retail investors in the United States when it comes to gold, silver, and mining stocks. I just looked before getting on this interview with you, and on Robinhood, uh, they show you the top 100 positions owned by people, and in that top 100, it's ranked by the number of people owning them. Not one single gold stock, silver stock, or exchange traded fund is on the list. Not one. Zero interest among retail investors in the United States. So that tells me that there's incredible opportunity because at some point, I would think, uh, the masses will start to trickle in, uh, but they're not there yet. So I want to get ahead of them. I think everyone listening should want to do that. Uh, too. So I think there's an incredible opportunity to buy into gold stocks and even small cap stocks because they have incredibly small valuations. In a gold bull market or metals bull market, most junior mining stocks get to market caps of $25 million, and now almost all of them still have market caps under $10 million, some under $5 million. And you can pick out uh, you know, stocks to buy there and, and aim for four times returns over the next uh, two or three years. Uh, so it's an, I think that's also one of the best opportunities, uh, you know, if, if you are aiming for big returns. Mike, thank you so much for chatting with us. Thank you. Great to talk with you. And again, have a happy July 4th. You too. My guest has been Mike Swanson, editor of WallStreetWindow.com. If you have any questions for Mike, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter at HowStreet. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com Radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.